Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional checking in. Well, what's better in robotics? More robotics! That's right, more robotics, 1714. Winners last year at the Wisconsin Regional, so I'm looking to avenge your title once again. Number one seed uh, just a couple weeks ago as well, too, up in Duluth. So looking for big things here. More robotics making a lot of improvements. Uh, complete redesign or restructuring of some of their frame area because they had some really bent in frame. So we'll be talking about that. We'll only following their note journey as they go through. They got some really cool stuff going on with different elevators on their robot. And then we'll be talking about how they're approaching their climber and doing some cool uh, vision and other things like that as well too. So let's learn more about them coming up here uh, behind the bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Tommy, let's start off on this. You made some upgrades to your frame coming in from your last event there. Uh, you showed me some pictures earlier uh, and definitely uh, needed that upgrade for us. So talk to me about how you reinforced your robot and then we'll start following that note journey. So what we did here is last last time at Northern Lights, we had carbon, um, carbon fiber 3D printed um, bearing like blocks for the elevator and they broke a lot during our matches so what we decided to do is go to west coast products and get the aluminum ones which are been holding up really great none of them have been breaking and we actually have um in our elevator frame here our elevator bent backwards at northern lights which was very terrible for us so what we did is we replaced most of these gussets with uh nuts and bolts so those hold them better instead of rivets and what we did is we actually put aluminum blocks inside these aluminum uh, tubes in order to reinforce the structure even more there. So that's really been helping us, getting us through this competition well. And how's it been holding up so far? We only a couple a couple matches in, but you're pretty happy so far? Oh yeah, uh, and I don't think the elevator has actually been breaking at all. Um, it's been holding up great, holding up strong, and I'm excited to see what's, what's gonna happen in the next couple matches here. All right, take me through your note journey and how that's working. So. What we'll have here is uh, put the intake down here. And we're, we're over bumper ground intake, so the note goes through here. And we have these funnels here that can guide it to the feeder. And we have this brake beam sensor in here. There's just a slight little hole in there, if you can see it, that stops the note from you know shooting out of there. And um, so let's go ahead and shoot the note. Shoot the note. Yeah, so it's a pretty strong shot. Um, as you can see that these, these axles actually did not move. So what we did is we took the West Coast products wheels, took the hub out and we inserted our own 3d printed dead axle hubs. So these wheels spin on their own. If we ever wanted to include spin or we ever wanted to, you know, get more power on this side and less power on that side or whatever. So, yeah. So right now with, with your shot, it's a pretty knuckleball shot, not a lot yep. of Are you looking at potentially making changes to that in the future? We might make changes in the future if we ever want to go to Worlds or for an off season. Um, I think we, yeah. Well, looking, looking forward to see how you do. Hopefully you're qualifying for rules. You're looking really strong yep. here at Wisconsin as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and move it over to uh, Alex. Uh, you got a lot of elevators on this robot here. So break down, uh, first off, not only what you have, but uh, why did you choose to go to this robot? Why was it best for more robotics? Yeah, so um, we always do a lot of open alliance looking like uh, a lot of the teams do on Chief Delphi. And we noticed that team, uh, team Scream had a concept where they had an elevator on a shooter. And we were like, we can do that. We used uh, Elevator 2023. We're generally pretty experienced with them. We were confident in our ability. So that's what we did. Um, so this elevator is two stage. There are two West Coast products blocks here. And then there's also uh, reinforcements that we also added another part of it here. These are custom machined aluminum blocks that we made on our CNC. One here, one here, and on Sam on the other side. Um, and then otherwise, we use the thrifty mounting hardware on the back here to uh, raise this guy up. So we got two chains and then the uh, appropriate rigging to get uh, two stages working. Um, in addition, uh, this, allow yeah, this allows us to uh, take the elevator up, which we'll demonstrate here. 
for amping. So here, can I get a note? Take, yeah. And we'll take it up here, and that'll allow us to score in the amp with a lot of force. Yeah, uh, our according to the beam brake, the wheels will spin up when they get a note in the beam brake, so that allows to shoot out in that amp real fast. I think um, one of the other benefits of this too is having, uh, we were talking earlier, is that you're able to uh, bypass some defenders as well too, yeah. talking about that we'll, we'll show off that, yeah, so if we get another note in here, yeah. Yeah, we won't shoot it at our, our pit mates here, but that shot will allow us to go over defenders. It's about 42 inches in the air, so yeah, we can get past any large smiley faces that are 48 inches tall. This uh, transfer that you have over all is very, very smooth as well too. Uh, just talk to me a little about some of the packaging thought process of trying to get everything all, all in here. Yeah, we had uh, initially had issues fitting into frame perimeter, but uh, we knew that if we got this guy all the way up, uh, we were able to stay in frame. Uh, if you would hang out a little bit during a match, we were okay with that. And then the pivot um, is able to, you know, really get almost very close to 90 degrees here. So that allowed us to kind of keep everything together and, uh, yeah, just overall be packed very tightly, just like we were last year. Sam, on this robot, you're utilizing odometry, uh, and I see a couple of limelights as well, too, to correct down the field. Talk to me more about how that software process is working out uh, for your bot so far. Yeah, so um, last year's game, they had April tags, but you could definitely get away with not using them especially considering that you had the retroreflective tape for the cones. However, for this year, table tags were definitely a necessity. So what we decided to do is start off with, with uh, making out our robot odometry, right? So creating that using our swerve modules here. That you can, they drive, they rotate, and you can keep track of exactly where your robot is. But let's say you get hit, right? Or your wheels start to slip, and then your odometry is gonna be off. That's where our limelight comes into play. Our limelight is constantly looking for April tags all across the field, and whenever it sees one, it will update our robot's odometry. This process is also essential for making our shots. What we do here, we take our odometry, and we do some trig to figure out where our swerve needs to rotate, right? That way we're, we're, uh, we're pointing where we need to be. On top of that, we also take our distance that we calculate from our, from our odometry, and then we feed that into two linear interpolation tables. The first one will adjust our shooter angle. So if you look at our shooter, it goes up and down. And then our second one is our shooter speed. And that's how we're able to constantly and consistently make shots. Another thing that's worth mentioning is our brake beam sensor over there. Uh, what we could do is whenever we get a note in our, our feeder, I'm ready to shoot it. We can do a lot, do, we could do some uh, optimization there to spin it up to get ready to shoot before we feed it in. We could also make sure that our intake doesn't come down to grab, grab another note. That way we don't accidentally have two notes at once. And that way we could use that to kind of control uh, the the note moving process. Well, more robotics. Uh, good luck as you uh, look to uh, take another Wisconsin regional win. Uh, so look forward to seeing how you perform here. Number one seed a couple of weeks ago. Let's see if you can do it here. Good luck. Thanks for telling us more about your robot. A lot Thank of cool you. stuff. We can take out this machine and good luck the rest of the season. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.